join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. He is always there for us. He's good in every way. Pouring out His awesome love. He's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy. He's good in every way. see you there. You know, I don't usually look this awful, and you're, you're probably wondering about all of this. Well, it's kind of a strange story of my life the past few days. And what better place to start a story than at the beginning? So here we go. A few weeks ago, I was headed down from Jerusalem to the city of Jericho, while I was minding my own business when all of a sudden these two robbers, they jumped me. I didn't stand a chance. I took punch after punch and blow after blow to my face and to my arms and to my gut. And my tunic was in shambles, which I was really upset about because my grandmother made that tunic and it was my favorite tunic color. Oh, ow, ow. So anyway, there I was, robbed and beaten half to death. I was miles from the nearest town. I thought I was gonna die. Just then, I heard someone approaching. Help was on the way, right? But no, help was not on the way. This pompous priest just moseys on down the road, and does he throw me a bone? No, he just walks right on by. Now, you have to remember, my head was bleeding more and more, and I had bones that were well broken. So when this temple assistant didn't give me the time of day, I really thought I was done for. This is where it gets really exciting. There I was, laying in the dirt, clinging to life, and there he appeared. 
a Samaritan man. A Samaritan! Not exactly known for being good people. And Samaritans and Jews like me, well, we just don't get along. Was my life really in the hands of a Samaritan? Well, it turns out he really was a good guy. Well, first he starts cleaning my cuts and bandaging my wounds. I mean, what are the chances he even had that stuff with him? But I wasn't going to question it. Before I knew it, the Samaritan took me to the nearest town, but I stayed at an inn so I could recover. There, the innkeeper took care of me for a few days. Well, the Samaritan talked to him and took care of all the costs. I couldn't believe it. The goodness that this Samaritan showed was out of this world. Well, I don't know about you, but I've got to get a move on. I'm trying to finish that trip down to Jericho, and the sun is setting. All righty, bye now. Greetings everyone, I'm Minister LaCharles Bradley and this is our show, Sowing Faith Seeds. This is where we get into the Word of God and we learn a little something and we have a little fun along the way. Hey, on behalf of our pastor Dr. Carlton Sharp and Lady Gwen Sharp and Sister Rose Bradley, I want to welcome you to our show on today. So on last, we know we've been studying about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We know that, and let's look in our Bibles in Galatians chapter number 5. Verse 22, it says, The fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy, love, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Now, last week, we talked about the kindness and the gentleness part. We talked about how God wants us to be kind to one another. And God uses us here in the earth to be kind and show forth his love. Now, on this week, we're going to talk about his goodness. We're going to talk about what it means to have the fruit of the Spirit, which deals with God's goodness. And we'll see how that applies to us and how God wants to use us to show that goodness here on the earth. But before we do that, let's get into a word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, truly we bless you on this day. Lord, we truly thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your, your glory on today, Lord. Now, Father, as we open up your word and Learn about this fruit of the Spirit, goodness. Show us how it applies to our lives. Open up our minds so we might be able to understand. Open up our hearts so we might be more receptive unto your word. But most of all, open up our spirit, man, so we might be able to, to uh, hide this word in our heart so we might not sin against you. Now, Father, we desire to be good. We desire to be just like you. And we know that in your word, Lord, that it says that you are about love and that you are about goodness and all these other fruit of the Spirit. Now, Father, open up our hearts as we learn about this on today. And we give your name all praise on the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Say it with me. Amen. Now, like I said, on this week we're going to be talking about the goodness of the fruit of, in the good that as it applies to the fruit of the spirit. And uh just like in our in our video as we worship on this morning and we saw that. God is always good all the time. And I enjoyed that video. It, 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 it just shows and reminds us, even as it showed the animals, and I guess they were in Africa, and it showed all of the good things that God has created. And even us, God said when he created man, that man was very good. So I don't care what you're seeing on television. I don't care what you, your friends are saying or what somebody else might have told you. God created you, and you are good. And the reason why you're good is because God said so. But what makes us good is not in ourselves. It's having the Holy Spirit in our heart. So we're going to learn about that on today and how to, to, to tap into this goodness. How to tap into this goodness so we can be pleasing unto God. Open your Bibles. I want you to open your Bibles. I hope, you, I hope when you're studying with me, I hope you have your Bibles ready and available because the Word of God is how we're going to be able to please God. 
The word of God is how we're going to be able to transform our lives. And this is how we're going to be able to change so that we might be able to be closer to God and be more like God each and every day. So I want you to grab your Bibles. Some of y'all might have them on your phones or your computers or man, it's always good to have his word close to you, close to you. But most of all, have it in your heart. Luke chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 30. And we're going to really learn about what we talk about, what we're really talking about. We talk about this goodness. Because everything that looks good or everything that sounds good, how many of you know that that don't mean make it good? Some things that look good are not really good, according to what this Bible says. Some things that sound good are not really good. Luke chapter 10, verse 30. It says, Jesus took up the question and said, A man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell upon the hands of robbers. They stripped him, beat him, and fled, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the road. Now, all of you know what a priest is. Priest is just like we have a pastor, Dr. Sharp and Lady Gwen. We have preachers in the, in, in, underneath the pastor. We have uh, prophets and evangelists. Well, this priest was just uh, one of the leaders in the church. So as, he, as this man fell to these robbers, he just happened to be coming by after, after this man was left for dead. And it says, when he saw him, he passed, my Lord, on the other side. So here we are, got this man that was beaten, robbed, and left for dead. And here comes the man of God, quote unquote. And what did he do? He passed on the other side of the street. Now, is this someone who won't look good? Or is this someone who has the goodness of the fruit of the Holy Spirit? You tell me. You're right. This is someone who just wants to look good. See, we can look good to others, but God knows what's in our heart. God knows what is in our heart by the way we treat one another. So this is somebody that was trying to look good. Let's go a little bit further. In Luke chapter 10, let's look at verse number 32. In the same way, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, saw him. And what did he do? Passed on the other side. He did the same thing as the priest did. The Levite was a, another section of uh, church leaders. And he was looking good. I bet he had on his finest suit, uh, in his finest robe, his best best uh, tourniquet and all these things. I bet his hair was all looking all good. But don't you know it don't matter how good you look. All that matters is what looks good to God in your heart. So this Levite did the same thing as the, the priest did. How would you describe that person? Is this somebody that was trying to look good? Or is this somebody that had the good, goodness of the Holy Spirit in his heart? You guess right again. This is somebody that was only trying to look good. And God, that's what God, That's what. if you don't get anything else out of this lesson, that's what God wants us to remember today. It's not enough for us to just look good. It's not enough for just us to just quote scriptures. It's not enough for us to just look holy. God wants us to be holy. To, the, in the Bible, the God, God reminds us, be ye holy, for I am holy. And when you are being holy, you allow the Holy Spirit to use you from the inside out. Not about what you wear. It's not about how you look. It's about what's in your heart. Luke chapter 10, let's look at verse number 33. But a Samaritan, now a little background on all of these groups. The Levites were well respected in their, in their sect. The priests were well, well respected, highly thought of. The Samaritans was like, so you have somebody that live in the West End of Boma and you have somebody that lives in the projects. The Samaritan were, were the people that probably was living in the projects. The Samaritans were the people that probably people would try to look down on. The Samaritans were the people, and there's nothing wrong with the projects. What I'm saying is, these were the people that people didn't see in a high regard. So, a lot of times we base people on how, where they live. We base people on what they got on, what kind of clothes they're wearing, or how they smell. But this Samaritan, this person that might have came from the projects, Let's look and see what they did. Verse number 30, 
Luke chapter 10, verse number 33. But a Samaritan on his journey came up to him, and when he saw the man, he had compassion. This was makes all the difference in our lives. If you have compassion, and that's where the goodness comes in. When you have compassion, meaning that when you see somebody in need, you, you show them love. When you see somebody in need, let's read on. It says, he went over to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. That's something they used to, to, to help uh, heal the wound. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denaro, he took out some money, and gave it to the innkeeper and said, take care of him. When I come back, I'll re reimburse you for whatever you spend. So not only did he stop and have compassion, he took that compassion and put it to work. He took that compassion and he said, the Bible tells us faith without works is dead. He didn't say just say I'm I'm a Christian and I have faith. He exercised his faith by putting it to work. He said it says here in the Bible, he banished the man's wounds. It said he put him on his own animal. Like he put him in his car. Like in our modern day that would be, hey, come on with me. Come take a ride with me. And not only that, he uh took out some money and gave to the innkeeper and said, hey, take care of this man. And it said in verse 36, it says, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robbers? And then they said, the answer said, the one who showed him mercy. He said, then Jesus told him, go and do the same. So here in our Bible story, we see that this man fell victim. And we know here in our country, here in our, in our, in our world. We got people that have needs right now. And God is saying to us, go and do the same. Go and show compassion. God is saying, go and show love. God is saying, go and show them me. Every time we do that, we show somebody the love of Christ. And we show somebody God. And we get somebody a little bit closer to who this God is. So we learned, learned in our story today that God wants us to show goodness. It says, is this just looking good or does, it, does this show a person who have the fruit of goodness through the Holy Spirit? And God wants us to have that in our lives. Goodness. He wants us to be loving and good to one another. Let's take a vote. Because sometimes we use this word good and we, we use it uh, lightly. So I want to name off some things. I want you to tell me whether these things are good or not good according to our standards here in the world. Let's start with pizza yeah that's right i'm talking about pizza is that good or good not good yeah usually we think pizza is good right video games oh man i got <laughs> i like video games just like y'all do is that good or not good we tend to think of that as being good right broccoli <laughs> actually brother charles loves some broccoli but let, let me ask you is that good or not good Many times as young people, we don't like eating vegetables. So some of y'all might be saying, no, Brother Charles, that's not good. Football. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Is that <laughs> whatever your team is? Is that good or not good? We always we, we we love watching football, right? Cookies. Is that good or not good? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Puppies. Is that good or not good? I like a puppy to snuggle up with and all that good stuff. Snakes. What about a snake? Is that good or not good? I don't want no snakes. If I see a snake, I, Brother Charles might take off running. Thunderstorms. How many of you like thunderstorms? Is that good or not good? No, nobody really likes no thunderstorm because it's scary and lightning. And man, that's just a scary situation. What about bedtime? Is that good or not good? Not good. But actually it's good because you need your sleep, you need your rest so you can be ready for the next day. So that's a trick question. What about pop quizzes at school? Is that good or not good? <laughs> Nobody likes pop quizzes. But guess what? How else are you going to get smarter and know that you're learning the lesson that the teacher is teaching? So that could be good. So um, some of these answers, sometimes we think some of these things are good and not good. So that's the reason why we can't compare worldly things 
the everyday things to what we're talking about here today, the goodness of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. First of all, goodness is a fruit of the Spirit, meaning that because you have the Holy Spirit living in you, this is something that you have access to through the Holy Spirit. And it comes from God. That's the most important thing that you need to remember that. The fruit of the Spirit, all of these things come from God. They originate from God. They, they describe who He is. So this is not something that, that's up, up for judgment, uh, a thumbs up or a thumbs down. When we're talking about God, it's always good. It's always holy. And it's always something that we want more of. So this is the reason why we can't compare, you know, your parent when you come home from school. What, what, what is one thing your parents always say? Well, how was school? Good. It was good. Or it was all right. So if you think about, somebody might ask you, well, you're a Christian. Well, how is it being a Christian? Uh, it's good. If we associate our normal thinking with these spiritual things that God is trying to put inside of us and God is trying to show others, we can make it seem mediocre. We can make it seem like it's not, not something to be uh, excited about. We can make it seem like it's not something that's great and holy. So this goodness is something that's on the inside of us, that comes out every day through our lives. Okay, I got some items here, and we're gonna talk about it. And I'm gonna show. I want you to see how these things as associate with our lesson on today. It says, "Goodness is a purity of heart. It's not just about doing good, good things. It's char it's a character trait that results in good things. So basically." When you know God, and when God is inside of you, and God is using you, goodness is going to follow you just because you know him. Just like this blanket right here. This is, ooh, this blanket is comfy. What is good about a blanket? Why do we like blankets? Because blankets comfort us. Blankets keep us warm. Blankets keep us feeling safe. What about, I got something else. What about this right here? This ointment. Say you have a cut on your hand and you need to put some of this ointment. What, what does this ointment do, do? This ointment helps us to heal. So not only does God's goodness comfort us God God's goodness helps us to heal what about I got some more I got some more <laughs> what about this what about this bandage so say I had a, a really big cut and I needed to wrap myself up so God's goodness stays really close to us God's goodness is wrapped all around us God's goodness is holding strong tight to us God says if you come close to me I'll come close to you because so just like this bandage can hold everything together and hold everything in place God's goodness holds everything together in our lives God's goodness just wraps us tight and keeps us Secure so that we can move forward in the things of God. I got I got I got I got a couple more. I got a couple more. What about this? Let me hold it a little bit closer. This is a bandage. <laughs> Let me take this other one off. <laughs> this bandage. If you have a cut on your hand. You can put this bandage on there, and the bandage is going to do a couple things. The first thing that bandage is going to do, that bandage is going to stop the bleeding. It's going to slow it down. It's going to stop, put pressure on that wound and stop you from bleeding. And just like God's goodness, a lot of times people hurt us. A lot of times somebody might hurt your feelings at school. And God's goodness, somebody might come and say, don't worry about it. and They didn't mean to hurt, hurt you. Don't worry about it. God loves you. And it kind of stops that bleeding. Not only that, if I if I have been wounded and somebody comes and throws some dirt on my hand, 
This band has stopped that wound from getting infected. This band has stopped that wound from getting dirt and all kinds of chemicals and other stuff that you don't want to get into that, that wound. So just like that bandage covers us and protects us and keeps us, God's goodness covers us. God's goodness and mercy and grace every day. The Bible says every day we have a brand new mercy. So every day God gives us a brand new bandage, a brand new covering, a brand new mercy. So that we can be covered from the, the from the sin and the and the and the things of the world that tries to come and infect us. So when you have a bad thought about somebody or something, God's goodness. When you when you when you want to talk back to your parents, but God said no, my goodness is covering you. When you want to lash out at your teacher because you feel like she's picking on you, you don't do it because of God's goodness covering you. So, we know that God's goodness, the Bible tells us his grace is sufficient for us. And what that means is his grace is able to keep us, cover us, and protect us at all times. So, let's, let's um, talk about the people who, who we, we learned about earlier in, in, in that story where Jesus was giving a parable. They were the religious leaders of Jesus' day. They were the ones who everyone looked up to, the people who did the most good things, so, so they say. Let's see what Jesus said about them. We're going to read these couple of scriptures, and that's going to be our lesson for today. Matthew chapter 23, verses 23 through 28. Matthew 23. See, Jesus, Jesus don't want us to just look the part. Jesus wants us to have the heart. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit just gave me that rhyme. Jesus don't want you to just look the part. He wants you to have the heart. Matthew 23, verse, we're going to look at verse number 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. That's some of the people that was in that story. You pay a tenth of mint, dill, and cumin, yet you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. So if you're paying your tithes just to stick your chest out, if you're paying your tithes so you can brag, God says, I don't, I don't even want it. I want your heart. Because if I have your heart, you're going to do, do what I ask you to do out of love, out of, out of faith. It says, these things should have been done without neglecting the others. Blind guys, you strain in a gnat, yet gub down the camel. Woe unto you Pharisees and hypocrites. You clean out the outside of the cup and dish, but inside are full of greed and self-indulgement. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup so the outside may become clean. It says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. You are like washed white tombs which appear to be beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and impurity. So what God is telling us right here, I don't care about what, so much what you saying if it don't line up with what's on the inside. I want the inside to be beautiful. He said, because when, when the inside is beautiful, you're going to say what you believe. And it's going to line up. So he don't want you just, basically, he don't want you talking to talk without walking to walk. Let's look at another scripture in James chapter 2, verse 14 as we close our lesson for the day. James chapter 2. Let's look at verse 14. It says, what is what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister without clothes and lacks food daily, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, eat well, but don't give them what the body needs, what good is it? In the same faith, if it doesn't have works, it's dead by itself. So God is saying, if you, you say you love me, if you say you, you love others, it's going to show up in your actions. It's going to show up in the way you treat each other. It's going to show up in the way you treat me. It's going to show up in your prayer life. It's going to show up in your giving. It's going to show up in every aspect of your walk. Not only what you say, but what you do. Faith without works is what? Dead. So we learn on today that the goodness of the Holy Spirit is a fruit of the Spirit that allows us to show 
our goodness through the condition of our heart by the things that we do. We learn it with our, with our bandage that God covers us and protects us. We learn with our ointment that God heals us from wounds. We learn with our other bandage that God wraps us around and keeps us close. And we learn with our blanket that God comforts us. God, God covers us and God keeps us close to him. So on today, I want you to remember as we close our program, I want to first of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for, for tuning in. Thank you for taking the time to allow the word of God to fill your heart. And what God wants you to have is a heart of goodness. Because when we have a heart of goodness, God can use us in a special way. Hey, I'm Minister LaCharles Bradley. I want to thank you for tuning in to our program, Sowing Faith Seeds. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Carter Sharp, and Lady Gwen Sharp, and Sister Rose, we want to say, God bless you. We want to say, as a man, as, 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 just like in Romans chapter 3, 12, verse 3, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just so excited about this, this goodness. Romans 12 and 3 says, God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. So remember this, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we are building lives. I'll see you next time on our program. God bless you.